know the story Cinderella? I'm sure most of you do. But I wonder, do you know how many different versions there are of the story of Cinderella? Have a guess. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. I wonder how you answered my question. The answer is... There are more than 500 different versions of Cinderella. From all around the world, there are different versions of this story about a poor young girl who is mistreated by her horrible sisters, but in the end, she's the one who wins the heart of the good and noble prince. So, today, to celebrate St. Valentine's Day, later this week... Today's episode is a beautiful love story, a Cinderella kind of story, and this is a Native American Indian version. After listening, you might like to compare it to all the ways that it's the same as the Cinderella story you know, and all the ways that it's different. Before we begin, if you haven't already done so, please take a moment to rate, review and share this podcast with others. And don't forget, you can download some free colouring sheets if you go to www.journeywithstory.com. Now let's take a journey with The Rough Face Girl. There was once long ago a large village situated on the border of Lake Ontario. At one end of the village was a lodge in which lived a being who was always invisible. He was a mighty hunter whose spirit guide was the moose. He had a sister who attended to all his wants and it was known that any girl who was able to see him would marry him. There were many maidens who tried but none succeeded. In the early evenings, when the Invisible One was supposed to be returning home, his sister would walk down to the lake shore with any of the girls who had come to visit. She could see her brother returning home, since to her he was always visible, and when she saw him she would say to her companions, "'Do you see my brother?' As it happens, none of these girls could ever see him. However, while some honest girls would say no, most would answer that they could indeed see him. Then the sister would ask, Of what is his shoulder strap made? Or, as some tell the tale, she would inquire about other things, like his sled harness or his bowstring. They would reply, a strip of rawhide, or a green sapling, or something of that kind. And of course, all of them were only guessing. And the sister always knew they had not told the truth. And she would turn her face away and reply, Very well, let us return to the wigwam. When they entered the wigwam, she would ask them not to take a certain seat, for it was the seat of the Invisible One. After they had helped to cook supper, they would wait with great curiosity to see her brother eat. And they could always tell that he was a real person, because as soon as he took off his moccasins, They became visible, and his sister would hang them up. They would also see food leaving his birch bark dish and disappear in midair. But beyond that, they would see nothing. Elsewhere in the village, there lived an old man, a widower with three daughters. The youngest of these was very small, weak, and often ill. But this did not prevent her sisters from treating her 
with great cruelty. They would make her sit close to the burning fire to tend it, and so close was she to the flames and sparks and smoke that after a while her hands and arms became red and scarred and her once beautiful face became pocked and riddled with tiny blemishes. Even her lovely long hair hung limp and lifeless and scorched. After a while, the people called her the Rough Face Girl. When her father returned home from the day, he would ask why the child was so disfigured, and her sisters would promptly say that it was her own fault, for even though the father had forbidden her from going close to the fire, she had done so anyway, and had fallen in. The father would shake his head and wonder what would become of his youngest daughter. One day it occurred to the two older sisters that they should go and try their luck at seeing the Invisible One. They wore their finest clothing and took great effort to look their best. That evening they walked to the end of the village and finding his sister at home, they walked with her down to the water. Then, when the Invisible One came and his sister asked if they saw him, they said, Certainly, and also replied to the question of the shoulder strap or sled harness, saying, A piece of rawhide. Of course they could not actually see him, and they got nothing for their lies, and eventually went home, disappointed. When their father returned home that evening, he brought with him many pretty little shells, and the next day the two older sisters began to string them into beads. And while they busied themselves, a rough-faced girl decided it was time for her to see whether she might catch sight of the Invisible One. Having no clothes beyond a few rags and knowing that she would get nothing from her sisters, she went off into the woods and found a few sheets of birch bark to make herself a dress and leggings and she decorated them by scraping figures on the bark. Then she found a pair of her father's old moccasins stiff with age and soaked them in water so that they would become flexible enough to wear. Finally she begged her sisters for a few shells. The older sister just scoffed at her but the middle sister, feeling sorry for her through her a few of the smallest shells. So, poor rough-faced girl, dressed in birch bark and shells and wearing her father's great old moccasins, which came nearly up to her knees, started across the village to try her luck. And if her sister's scorn was not bad enough, little rough-faced girl's courage was sorely tested even more because the entire village erupted in laughter and ridicule as she passed them by. Her sisters tried to shame her into returning home, but she would not obey and carried on to the door of the Invisible One's lodge, despite all the teasing from the villagers. Some say that a spirit had inspired her and walked with her to give her strength. And this may indeed be so. The Invisible One sister stared in surprise at her young visitor. And then she said, You are welcome. And she treated her with great kindness. As usual, rough-faced girl helped prepare the evening meal. And when the sun was nearly down, the Invisible One sister led her to the lake. My brother comes, she said. Do you see him? Little rough-faced girl gazed along the shore. I'm not sure. Then her eyes lit in wonder. Yes, I see him. But how can there 
be such a one? The sister looked at her curiously. What is his shoulder strap made from? His shoulder strap is... is a rainbow. The sister's eyes grew wide. And his bowstring? His bowstring is... the Milky Way. His sister smiled. Let us return to the wigwam. When they reached the wigwam, the invisible one's sister took the strange clothes off rough face girl, and she washed her with water from a special jar. Under her gentle hands, the young girl's scars disappeared, leaving her skin shining and smooth. She also combed a rough face girl's hair, and as she did, it grew down to her waist, black and gleaming as a raven's wing and ready for braiding. It had been so long since anyone had treated poor rough face girl so kindly that her joy and gladness overflowed, making her face a blaze with a beauty beyond words. Then the sister opened a chest and took out a beautiful wedding outfit and asked Rough Face Girl to wear it. She had just put it on when a deep voice said, Greetings, my sister. Rough Face Girl turned to the entrance and stared at the magnificent young hunter. She saw surprise light his face when their eyes met. Greetings, my brother, said the sister. You are discovered at last. The invisible one walked over to Rough Face Girl and took her hands in his. For years I have waited to find a woman of pure heart and brave spirit. Only such a one could see me. And now that I have found you, shall you be my bride? And so they were married. And from then on, Rough Face Girl had a new name. The lovely one. Like her husband, she too had kept herself hidden, waiting for the right person to find her. And now that she had that person's love, she was hidden no more. think this story's souvenir is, the little nugget of truth about what it means to be human and walk in this world. <laughs> yes, I think it must have something to do with realising the most wonderful beauty of all is that of a kind and loving heart, just that rough face girl. And when we are loved and treasured, our inner beauty will always shine forth. If this story painted some pictures in your mind, do send us your drawings to www.journeywithstory.com so we can share with others. And if you haven't already done so, please take a moment to rate, review and share this story with others. Happy Valentine's Day to all of our listeners. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with story. Music and post-production was by Colette Jonas.